do to do the builder here. And in this episode of Zig and Death, we're going to be uh, talking about working with files and directories in Zig. Uh, but first things first, I gotta give a big thank you to Robin uh, Bergevsky, Stefan Mainente, and Steve Manuel, who, uh, who all made donations to the channel. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. This really helps to keep on making content like this. And if anybody else wants to pitch in and help out the channel, there's a link in the description and in the channel homepage. So uh, Robin, Stefan, and Steve, thank you very much. Um, the Zig uh, standard library has really great uh, cross-platform support for dealing with uh, file systems, uh, files and directories specifically. And we're going to be uh, looking at an example here. We're going to be creating a whole directory tree structure. And um, then uh, we're going to walk that directory tree structure, putting out um, information about the files. And finally, we will clean up by deleting everything when we finish. Um, I have this little helper fun function here called populate. It receives pointer to uh, an fs.dir, which is basically the the data structure that represents a directory in Zig, the standard library. And what we're going to do here is that we're going to loop for three, uh, three times here, zero to three. And the first thing that we do is uh, we set aside eight bytes here because we're going to be uh, generating the file name. We're going to be using uh, buff print here and we're printing into that uh, buffer basically uh, generating the name from the static text file underscore and the the actual iteration um, uh, variable here i and once we have that we can go ahead and try to create a file and you're going to you're going to see that um, which is maybe different from other languages zig tries to um, center everything that has to do with file system operations around this uh, concept of the directory okay so everything that has to do with opening files um, creating files uh, creating directories creating creating directory path all, all those types of, of operations you're going to see that they are actually methods of the directory structure which basically means that you you always deal in in a context of um, a, a local directory the the directory that you're working on, and from there you can do these different operations, which is uh, different from other uh, uh, languages that focus primarily on on absolute paths, for example, um, which can cause problems when you're dealing with cross-platform, low-level systems programming. Um, so in Zig, you're going to see that everything centers around the directory. As you can see here, when we want to create a file, we're calling this method on the dir uh, that we were passed in to this function. So we're going to try to create this file with our generated file name. Uh, the second uh, argument here is an options um, argument, which we can leave empty because uh, the defaults are saying defaults. Um, then we do a defer here to close that file because it's really important um, if you leave files open there are limits operating systems impose limits on the number of files you can have open at the same time so if you leave it open and you execute this program uh, many times you you will run out of uh, those open file handle uh, available made available by your operating system um, here, next up, we're going to be creating a buff, uh, buffered writer, calling it here, uh, this variable buff writer. We're using IO uh, buffered writer, and the buffered writer, it, here we see it's, it's, it's a composition. Um, it's working with an inner writer, which in this case is the writer uh, obtained with the writer method of the file that we just created. So uh, we, we want to do this because if you try to use the, uh, the writer of the file directly, there's, you, you can do that, and there's no problem with that. The only issue is that each, each write uh, call and the different methods of that writer directly on the file 
they're going to be you're going to be making uh, direct system calls and that that can really hurt performance and when you use a buffered writer those writes are actually going uh, into memory into a buffer in memory and once uh, uh, certain conditions are met then the contents of that memory uh, is written out in a in a single uh, system call every once in a while and this improves uh, performance quite quite significantly so it's recommended that when you're going to be writing to a file you use a buffered writer and here um, once we have that we, we actually then obtain once again we call the method the writer method of on the buffered writer to obtain the actual writer implementation for the buffered writer once we have that we can do a print here use the print method to to take advantage of the formatted printing facilities in zig and we write to that file this this would be now the contents of that file this is file and once again the the iteration uh, index and finally very important when you're using a buffered writer you have to flush because it, you can finish um, these uh, operations and there, there, there can still be um, um, content in that buffer that hasn't been written out to the file so when you call flush, it'll it'll actually perform that final write to the file, and that's a that's about it for that uh, helper function. Let's look at main now. In main, we're going to be uh, making use first of all uh, in the fs namespace of the standard library. We have this cwd um, uh, function, which basically will return the current working directory. And, and you have to be aware that this is current working directory is the directory when you when you actually execute the program and once you have that which is a directory in, instance um, you can call methods on it and we call here the make open path method which will uh, create a full directory uh, path uh, for example here we're creating uh, test deer a uh, slash sub one slash sub two so it'll 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 handle creating first the test deer and then inside that the sub one directory and then inside that the sub two directory so it creates the whole path in one in one call and after it creates it it'll open it because there are methods uh, in the standard library which just create directories uh, but this one, in just one call, it'll create the whole path and it'll return that directory instance, uh, open it for you, and it'll return it. Uh, once we have that, we want to uh, make sure here, we, we can uh, now make sure that when we finish, when we exit main with the fur here, we want to delete that whole directory tree. And we use uh, the delete tree method we pass in which which is the root directory of the tree that we want to delete in this case test deer and this will delete uh, this directory and all of its contents including subdirectories and any files uh, in there okay if there's any problem with that we catch the error and we uh, debug print the error out okay now we can defer the closing of the directory that that, that we basically opened here because um, after all of this path is created, we're going to obtain this uh, final sub2 directory. That's the one that we're going to be obtaining in here in this variable sub2. So we defer the closing of that uh, directory. Here, then we call our helper function and we pass in that pointer to that directory sub2. Next up, we're going to open the, uh, the parent directory to sub2, which was sub1. This time we use the open deer method of the current working directory and we pass in the test deer slash sub one path. Once again, we make sure we close on exit and we populate that directory. Next, we do it again with the actual root here, the test deer root. We open uh, the directory test deer, ensure the close on exit, and we populate that one. Now, we want to walk this directory structure and, and first of all we're going to need an allocator for that so we set up here our general purpose uh, allocator as we've done previously many times and then uh, what we need first of all 
the first step, we need an iterable directory. Um, this is different from just a normal directory. Um, this uh, uh, data structure that has the, the required uh, information for iterating over a directory uh, structure. So we call on the current uh, working directory the open iterable uh, dir method and we want to open the root here that we created the test dir and once we have that we make sure to close that version of the directory and once we have that iterable version we can call its walk method passing in the allocator and that will retain uh, that will return what's known as a walker and uh, you may be wondering well if we already have an iterable version uh, of this directory here in iterable this variable why can't we just use that you can use that to iterate over the, the different uh, components of the directory but then you would have to handle uh, yourself when you for example reach a directory inside a subdirectory uh, you would have to uh, recursively uh, handle uh, iterating over those subdirectories. Uh, the walker does that for you. So the walker will handle um, traversing the whole tree and uh, entering into uh, any subdirectories if necessary. So well, once we have that, we make sure to call it the init method when we're finished. And then we can call the walker.next using here the while loop that this uh, will return an optional entry um, and if it's null we will break out of the while loop an entry in uh, the case of the walker is a data structure that has several fields it, it, it has the, the path it has a reference to the directory that contains that entry it has a base name so with that information um, you can do uh, many things, whatever you, 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 you need. Here, first of all, we're printing out uh, first the path, and then by using the tag name built-in, we're, we're gonna print out the kind, okay? This uh, kind field basically tells you what type of entry this is. It could be a directory, it could be a file. Once we have that, we're gonna uh, basically, uh, with the condition of that precisely that kind field, if it's a file, then what we're going to do is we're going to try to open that file here um, using the, that dir reference that the entry offers us. We use the open file method and we use the base name in this case because we're already working relative to that directory that contains the, the, the file. We make sure to, to close the file when we're finished. Here we're going to create the counterpart to the buffered reader, uh, the buffered writer. It, 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 this time we, we're going to be reading so we're going to be creating a buffered reader and this has all of the benefits that 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 I mentioned for the buffered writer in the case of the buffered reader uh, you won't be making uh, repeated system calls every time you read from the file the reader will, ha will, will, will handle batching uh, those read calls by reading into a memory buffer and uh, once we have that reader we can make use here we're creating a buffer of 4k 4 kilobyte buffer and we are using this method of the reader which is read until the limiter or end the file you pass in the buffer that you're going to be using where you're going to be reading in uh, those bytes and the actual delimiter that will mark when you want to stop which here we're using the new line character and we're putting that into the line um, variable here the capture and once we have that we do a debug print uh, using the string format specifier of that line once we finish with that we print out a final new line for formatting and when we finish that loop we are basically finished with main so that's basically how you can walk a whole directory structure and uh, in this example we've, we, we see all of the not all because there are many many more operations that you can uh, perform on files and directories you can f find that in the the standard library i'll put a link in the description but uh, basically the most important ones opening files opening directories uh, creating directory paths creating files 
reading and writing to files? Uh, well, you have examples of all of that here. Let's move over to our terminal and let's uh, build here. Okay, I already have a cached version of that and we can run this. Um, and as you can see, here we have indeed the, the, the whole uh, walk of that uh, directory structure. And uh, one detail that you can notice is that the, the order uh, of traversal isn't that intuitive as you might think. You might think that maybe it would um, traverse the files in one directory before going into another. But in this case, I'm running this on a Mac, in Mac OS, uh, in, in the first directory, the root, it, it, it traversed file zero, and then it went to the sub, into the sub one subdirectory, and in there it traversed its file zero and, zero and then file one, and then it goes into the sub two subdirectory, and there it traverses all three files, and then it goes back out to the sub one parent and finishes with the file two of sub one, and then it goes back up to the parent, uh, the root, and it finishes with file one and file two. And if we run this uh, again, you're gonna see that pretty much that same traversal order is uh, maintained. I also uh, compiled a version of this program for Linux, and I have this Linux box here. So let's run it here on the Linux box. And as you can see, the, the operating systems do they do things differently. In the case of Linux, it does traverse all of the files of a directory before going into a subdirectory. But the order is a little peculiar here. It's basically traversing in reverse. Uh, we got file two, file one, file zero, then it goes into the sub one. And there we have two, one, zero, and then sub two, and then two, one, zero. And if we run it again, um, you see that the order uh, it's basically the same. I wouldn't recommend depending on traversal order. This is kind of like when you're dealing with threads that you have an uh, non-deterministic out outcomes. Um, even if the, this order stays stable, um, you never know what may happen in future versions of operating systems. So you should uh, basically uh, plan your strategies without depending on traversal order. Okay. So I hope you find this uh, useful. Uh, do the builder here. I'll see you in the next one.